Hi, welcome to the next edition of Fly Tying with the Montana Angling Company. Today we're going to be tying our version of the Squirmy Wormy. So to start, you need to do a little prep. And the way we do it is we take our tungsten bead, and it's going to be a size 12, sort of match to fit. We take a bobbin threader, put it through, and then I just take the Squirmy Wormy body material and try and thread it through the hook and the trick is just to kind of go slow and this might even take me a time or two sometimes it just doesn't like to hold up but I'm gonna try to just pull it through there yeah came right through the bead and then we'll straighten it out a little just kind of stretching it real stretchy material but you can just kind of keep pulling on it slowly but surely and then it'll kind of just get moving eventually yeah and then just kind of put it in the middle there and then we'll take our size 12 Hennec Czech Nymph hook, real strong, that's a meaty hook right there. Um, and you know, for me, the worm is definitely a lead fly, generally, um, and a two nymph rig, and it's got to be on a strong hook, it's hunting for bigger fish. Yeah, so I fish it a lot, bigger hook, size 12, not the 14s and 16s, and I mean, that's a big piece of steel. Yeah, and then we put it in our vise ready to go yeah and so my version of the squirmy wormy kind of sticks with sort of my fly tying ethos simple to tie but also in this case it's a lead fly so it has to get down quick which with the tungsten bead and a little bit of wires you're gonna see accomplishes and the second thing is added durability I mean I think at this point pretty well established how well that the squirmy wormy fishes um, as proven in competitive fly fishing circles but then also amongst guides I mean you know it's become, you know, for better or for worse, a commonly fished fly a lot of times, especially early spring, winter. I mean, this pink is a great wintertime bug, early spring bug. Um, and then, you know, again, in that sort of later in the fall, midsummer, I'm not fishing it a lot. I'm doing a lot of dry fly fishing, kind of our go-to deal. But, you know, if it's 15,000 CFS in early June on the Missouri River. It's hard to find a rising fish, and a lot of times we will end up having a nymph, and, you know, <laughs> the worm's a good bet. A lot of times at higher flows, we'll just fish a wire worm. But, yeah, and so now we take a, and this is where my pattern differs. I take a serice wire, just, I mean, matched to the color of the body, put it in, walk it back, and then this is where I kind of start making a fly that's a little more durable than the original version, a little heavier, a little flashier too, maybe a little more eye-catching. Um, I don't know, but it works really well. I fished this fly now, you know, sort of all four seasons of the year, and I think it fishes just as well, if not better, than the kind of normal one, but at the same time, it's a little extra weight, and that extra durability, I mean, the as you'll see, there's kind of a front and a back portion that will build to this fly, and yeah, I mean, those can definitely fall off, but this wire, I mean, it just protects that body material from little fish teeth a little bit better than the standard one and prevents sort of the kind of unraveling because, I mean, that's kind of the only big drawback, right, to the squirmy wormy is a lot of times you can't get a lot of fish out of it. you got to have a bunch of them. And I think adding this wire, you know, it's not going to give you 30 extra fish, but you're going to get an extra 6 to 10 out of it before it falls apart on you which for me, from a tying standpoint, kind of pays off for itself, I think. I mean, you know, it's cheaper overall, less hooks and beads and everything, but also less time spent at the vise, which, you know, I like fly tying, but I'd rather spend it tying dry flies or something other than worms. I see these sort of as a functional fishing tool rather than a <laughs> true fly, maybe. But, yeah, and so now we just kind of polymer our wire forward and... I don't know if you saw what I was doing there, but I kind of stretched that body material out, sort of compresses it. That way the thread lays nice and flat, and we're just tying it in. And, you know, when I was tying in that wire, too, it kind of created a groove that that squirmy worm material can sit in real well. And now I'm just wrapping the wire forward. You know, it's more or less the same color as the body. But it definitely gives a little extra weight. This is a large ultra wire too. I mean, this is not messing around. This is the same stuff I'd use on the the bigger wire worms and everything else. I mean, this is meant to last. It holds its color really well too. I mean, you know, a lot of times squirmy worms they don't last terribly long, but you know, I might get a day or two of fishing out of this one fly, which is pretty cool for a squirmy worm. 
um, that, you know, definitely is going to fish better than its more durable wireworm, kind of more standard San Juan worm counterparts. And we'll just helicopter it off, which takes a little bit longer, of course, with this larger ultra wire. Give it a couple extra wraps, and then break out our whip finish tool and tie it off. And I know in previous vid videos, you may or may not have seen, I've been using um, super glue as a sort of a head cement, but with this squirmy worm material, it kind of disintegrates with some of these glues that a lot of the head cements and nail whatever stuff. And so what I actually do for this fly to give it that extra durability, doesn't seem to melt the material, hit it with our good old UV clear fly finish. And just kind of right around that collar, sort of tapering it maybe a little, flipping it over if we have to, and just kind of getting it in there, making this really a super durable fly. I mean, we're talking about basically, you know, this UV stuff is more or less an epoxy. And then we've got this wire. I mean, the only weak spot's the front and the tail. And as you'll see, when I cut it, I like leaving it long. So that way, I mean, if one falls off, ah, who cares? Just keep fishing it. Um, a lot of the time, you know, sometimes it can be different. And put a little extra, it's a bigger fly, a little extra time curing under the light. And then I'll just kind of trim these parts, but, you know, nothing particular. I like, like I was saying, leaving them on the longer side, but just to be aesthetically pleasing, kind of matching the length. Yeah, there we are. The Montana Angling Company, Squirmy Wormy. Get out there, do some fishing with it. See you next time.